Uh, the final from Dallas. Oklahoma City wins it 105-101. It was a big comeback in the final four minutes where it just looked like the Mavericks ran out of gas after leading this game the entire way. Uh, no play typifies the comeback by Oklahoma City more than this, where uh, Shea Gilgis-Alexander uh, corrals a loose ball in the corner and Lively is defending him, and it looks like he's got him uh, stuck in the corner, except Lively doesn't realize that, hey, SGA still has his dribble. And SGA decides, well, if you think I can only go one way, I'm going to go to the hoop for a dunk. Election. SGA takes it at Hardaway. Oh, that's ridiculous! Shea Gilgis Alexander in his bag! Ian Eagle on TNT with the call. Part of a big collapse by the Mavericks where they couldn't hit a shot, they couldn't get the right flow going on offense, and the Mavericks lose. Oklahoma City gets control of the series back, gets home court back, winning it 105-101. Now, Oklahoma City wins this game, but let's talk about Luka for a few minutes because we talked about this going into the playoffs. No player, individual player, has more at stake in the playoffs than Luka. This is a guy that's been in the league now six years, and this is a guy who... As many times as the Mavericks have tried to do it, try to surround him with the best talent, he's got the best player he's ever played with, with a with a Kyrie Irving who is still in his prime. And still here are the Mavericks where it's 2-2, they're going back to Oklahoma City, and Luka Doncic in the playoffs at best has been okay. He has been all or nothing, but he has been a volume shooter for the vast majority of the playoffs. Tonight, uh, you know, look, 22, 15, and 5. Sounds like a great night until you realize he's 7 for 17 from the floor, right? This follows games where he was 6 for 19, uh, 9 for 26, 10 for 24, 7 for 25, 11 for 26. He has had a couple of games in the playoffs overall where he has shot well. But for the vast majority, he has been a volume shooter, mm-hmm. and it has not worked. So far, the Mavericks have been fortunate to escape, but eventually this is what's going to catch up with them. And this is the big question is you have to sit here and say, okay, if the Mavericks can't get out of this, you're looking at a Dallas team that, okay, they're not trending upward. They're not winning more games. They're not getting closer to a championship. They're a nice 50-win team that can maybe win around in the playoffs. Maybe they don't. Luka is a great player, but – you can't lead them past into the conference final and beyond more than that. They went to the conference finals once. They got smoked. Uh, this It's just not trending where if you're a great team and you're built around a superstar where every year you are an NBA title threat. That's where you should be. Like, even though the Bucks lost this year, every year with Giannis, he's won it once. You know the Bucks are a title threat, right? It, that's just how it goes. And... With Luka, if this is another year where Dallas falls short and you look and go, man, the guy shot horrendously in the playoffs, you have to wonder, all right, is it still right to build around Luka or do we just need guys now to supplement Luka? Because Luka's only going to give us so much, get us so far. We need other guys. Instead of saying, hey, what does he need around him? It's what do we need that can take a little bit off of Luka's plate because we've tried being Luka-driven now for a long time. And it hasn't worked. Well, but you made the moves at the trade deadline and got yourself better. I mean, defensively, you gave up 100 points, right? We got to the magic 100 mark. Problem is, you know, Kyrie only has nine points in this one. Nine points, nine assists. You got more excellence from the offensive end by Washington, except for, once again, missed free throw. Mm -hmm. Luka missing that free throw with 10.1 seconds left. Um, Hits the second, but that was the opportunity to tie the game. So you're still chasing down the stretch, go on down the line. You brought in Washington, you brought in Daniel Gafford, who gives you defensive minutes, can give you a little bit offensively, did give you 10 and 8 tonight, but shooting 6 for 20, I mean, there's there's just no no way to solve that, right? If you have a bad shooting night, because rebounds, they were about even, right, for the, for the game between them and, and the Thunder. and But down the stretch, when it mattered, he got p- panicky, or so it seemed on a few few offensive sets. We saw him get bailed out with that three-pointer from Tim Hardaway Jr., but they were careless with the basketball. They had doubled the number of turnovers that the Thunder did, including a number down the stretch where guys got themselves trapped and were just kind of throwing the ball out to anybody who would be able to catch it, looking for contact down low and waiting on whistles that never came, and a lot of standing around. You saw more of that. 
Uh, it's the, all right, did he really call that or didn't call that foul? Clear reach-ins, whatever, that they were left frustrated. So, yeah, you're at the your wit's end here because you seemingly have done all that you needed to to give Luca the help to better the team. And you got a better defensive effort out of him this year than you've ever gotten mm-hmm. either, right? He's played on both ends of the court. Uh, a little more than you have in the past, and it's still not enough. Yeah, I mean, look, there's there, there's two ways to build a team. There There's building a team around one player, which is what the Bucks have done with Giannis, what they continue to try to do, and it's worked, right? They won a title. Sure. They're generally a threat, un- unless Doc Rivers is the coach. Well, uh, or but, he know, gets hurt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but but with Luka, it's, they've built around him. All right, what do we need to do? What does Luka need? All this time, he came into the league, we knew right away, okay, he's going to be a star. Look at what he's done for six years now. But they've tried different combinations of guys, and it hasn't worked until this year. Hey, finally, Kyrie Irving, who has been able to play well and stay on the court and not be out of the game because of any knuckleheaded reasons, uh, this has been it. And now if you walk away and go, man, we went out again in the second round, and 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 not that it's, well, we lost the number one seed. Oklahoma City had nothing. Like they they had nothing a few years. Like you want to talk about where Oklahoma City was when when Dallas got Luca? Look, Oklahoma City's built themselves up, and Dallas is still. Hey, we're Luca driven. So it's 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 going to be time to the point where you say, okay, we can't build around him anymore. Instead, it's okay, Luca does this. We need other people to do different things, so we're not always reliant on him because we've tried it so far and it's not worked. Luca's not led us to the finals, not led us to a title. He is get he get Luca's a terrific player, but is he exactly what we think he is? And that's a fine line between building around someone and building alongside someone. Right? You could build around LeBron for a long time, but now you have to build alongside. All right, what does LeBron need with A D and shooters, all this? You can't do that anymore. And and with Luca, yeah, I know he's only twenty five years old, but Again, six years, you've seen the best oh, of but, him. But that's what I was going to say. It's like we're, we're at that point in the evaluation when he, he is 25, when we've got quarterbacks that just are getting drafted into the NFL uh, and will take their first snaps at 24 and change as yeah. an NFL player, right? That yeah, but, Luke, remember, but, but these guys come in now at 18. No, guys I, in the I, NFL, no, no, they come I in at 21, it. 22. Uh, absolutely. But the, just the point being that – you would say you're still on the upward trajectory that you haven't hit the sweet spot of a guy's career just yet. I mean, how many of these guys took a long time? Giannis was many years into his career. He's not as young uh, as folks would want to believe, right? I mean, what was he, class of 2013 coming into the draft? It took years before he got to that title. I mean, so certainly for Mark Cuban and the brass, and and it's not done. I mean, look, it's 2-2. It's 2-2. He had a horrible shooting night, got bailed out on that call that did put him to the line at 10.1 seconds left. Probably should have been a foul on the ground before he made the move uh, on the court uh, and and pre-shot motion, I guess, before he started flailing and falling to the ground. But that being said, I mean, you shoot 52% from the free throw line, right? They were 12 of 23. Mm -hmm. 12 of 23. There's your game. Luka could shoot six for 20 all he wants. You hit free throws, you win this game. Period. Oh, and Luca missing that free throw with 10 seconds No, but seconds that's what left. I mean. The huge. I mean, he misses one. PJ misses one. A little bit later on, front iron barely drew iron on that at all. PJ Washington late in the game. So, but you shoot 12 of 23. I mean, that's that's the thing I circle more than is 6 of 20. Guys are going to shoot 6 of 20 from the field. Your stars do. Well, but you're hoping that Luke is not going to give you uh, once no, in a while. No, he gives you a bunch of Once those, in a yeah. while, six for 20. But every other game being six for 20, because that's what Luke has been. Like two out of every three games has been six for 20, seven out of 19, 10 for 26. I mean, that's that's what hey, he's been this playoff. Volume. Oh, can't, I tell you, it's not, it, it looks, the, the stats look great. The numbers look good. But you look at the volume shooting. All I care is about it. is a W. Not doing and, it. And uh, over six for 20, I'm going to look at 12 for 23. Mm. That's going to punch me in the face far more frequently. (laughs) 